I put a little post on Instagram today. 27 years ago today, they opened the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, it has, of course, become the cornerstone of Cleveland tourism for almost three decades. And I was checking out the fan leaderboards for the class of 2022 over at rockhall.com. You know, you can put in your fan vote. And Eminem is way on top. Way on top. Uh, as far as the fan ballot goes. I'm disappointed to see how low the MC5 is, by the way. I don't think that they get nearly enough credit. Beck, I'm surprised how low he is on the... Now, again, this is the fan ballot. I think of it in much the same way as I think of um, television commercials for psychics. You know, this is kind of for entertainment purposes only. Oh, They've already got their picks. It's like three ninety nine a minute? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, the official thing at uh, rockhall.com is the top five artists, as selected by the public, will comprise a fan's ballot that will be tallied along with the other ballots. But I always, I think they've already got their picks. Um, I could be way off on that, but um, I'm surprised at the top five. I have to say, I'm surprised at the top five. So part of this, too, is I think you can probably, and you take it with a grain of salt, but I think you probably have fans of these bands um, stuff in the ballot box. But Eminem's... Here are your top five. Eminem, Duran Duran, which I've still said, my uninformed prediction is that Duran Duran's going to edge out Rage Against the Machine. Eminem, Duran Duran, Pat Benatar, Dolly Parton, and Eurythmics, which I would not have expected to be in the top five. Judas Priest is not in the top five. Rage Against the Machine, Devo, Beck, New York Dolls, and all the other ones. Not in the top five. But Eminem's way out in front with almost 160,000 fan votes. So if the fan voting is something that interests you, you can do it yourself. You can vote once a day. You gotta log in and do all that stuff, but, you know, hardly a price to pay. To feel like you're making a contribution to the history of rock and roll. Because why not? Think of a band you love and then determine if it is enshrined in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio, which is 27 years old today. Think of all the bands prior to. Think about 28 years ago today when they were just saying, we're going to build a Hall of Fame for rock and roll in Cleveland, Ohio. Like right on the lake. They're like, we finally have enough famous pants and shoes to open a museum. <laughs> As it turned out... That we didn't steal from tombs. Hey, Planet Hollywood's not going to last forever, okay? So we'll take what we can get. Sitting or eating a hamburger next to Demi Moore's torn panties. So rockhall.com if you want to put in a fan vote there. And you know what I do? I do the fan vote because I'm a booster. Because I like to take part in these things because I have to live up to my handle as Captain Fun. I have to. And there's nothing more fun than voting. Mm -hmm. For rock and roll? For anything. Yes. For, anything. for rock and roll. For anything. For rock and roll. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Al and I live in Alberta, which is the Texas of Canada. Boy, imagine that. You know, most of Canada is, uh, is not cities, you know? So to call it the Texas of Canada, good for you. I'm a retired soldier. I live here with my native wife and kids. You guys were talking about the protests. The long story short is that anybody crossing the um, Canadian border has to be vaccinated. And the truckers had an exemption from that. And when it ended, that's when the protests started. We we're all vaxxed. But these protests are mostly... Racist right wingers. <laughs> no. Interesting. Come on. Uh, again, if you're somebody living in Ottawa, and again, I, I haven't. Um, I have to admit to falling off. Uh, my interest uh, waned in that whole Ottawa trucker thing, but I assume it's still going on. And people who live there complaining is just horns honking all night. I read some update where there's like a lot of kids that are living in trucks because their mom or dad are truck drivers and they're up there. And I don't know. But I hope they get that figured out. But again, 
I think it's instructive in that we, down here, as crazy as we think things are all the time, uh, we haven't cornered the market on nuttiness. Because people are people, so why should it be that you and I should get along so awfully? Now you that, that is some, down. You that, should write that down. That's really good. Yeah, That's, that's going to really put good. me in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Bill. <laughs> that line. You're hoping. That's right. Joe Rogan. Listen, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Joe God. Rogan. Are you tired of talking about Joe Rogan? Dude, I, when I drove home from Michigan on Monday morning, every single morning show, I couldn't scroll through for more than two seconds without hearing about Joe Rogan. It's all that's all over Twitter. And I mean, I follow a lot of comics. That's just the nature of the game. So it's just, I feel like it's all anybody's talking about. So well, but annoying. also, again, I don't listen to that show, but I do have a dog in the free speech fight. Well, yeah, but... There's and, a difference um, between being a defender of free speech and saying the N-word 700 times. Yes. Um, I think everybody involved in this has a point, a good point, by the way. Mm-hmm. I think Rogan has a... He, of course, he's gotten to the point now where he says it's a political hit job. Which I think it is, but that I agree mean- with him. I, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't disagree with him on that because it's not, a, it's not right-wingers who are giving Joe Rogan a hard time. Yeah, so he's not going to run for president? Oh, I don't think he said that. Well, I mean, he... <laughs> I think he wants The Rock to take up that mantle. In a lot of ways, like, all this is a relief. Because it's like, just... Because that, that video had always been out there. Right. It's like, this is a political hit job. And yes. so they're taking all this stuff that I've ever said that's wrong and smushing it all together. Right. But it's good because it makes me address some that I really wish wasn't out there. I guess I just don't know why he didn't actively remove those when he went over to Spotify. Because it looks like he has something to hide. He does. But That's he, my point. Hide that stuff. But you can't. Get rid of... Yes, you can. Someone has it. Everybody found these th- Huh? But someone will screenshot if someone will record it and they'll that's, say, hey, remember this? Is this fake? That's fine. I'm not saying pretend it doesn't exist. But if you're going to take $100 million from a company, scrub that shrimp before you go on their platform. It's not, not so his job. Go, it's their job. Huh? It's not his job to scrub it. It's their job to scrub oh, it. Too little, too late, though. They've got rooms full of people scrubbing. That's how all these things got found was, you know. So, yeah, if you take a super cut of a guy, and I feel bad for the guests, by the way. Imagine you're somebody not a lot of people knew. There's other people getting dragged into this because they were the person on the other side of the table when he, you know. Greg Fitzsimmons, Our boy Fitz dog yeah. in there. Yeah. Or, uh, or that Lockhart comp, Freddie Lockhart, or, you know. Because it's his platform is literally life-changing for, like, comedians and stuff. You get on Joe Rogan a couple times, and now you are selling tickets just based on your name. You know? Yeah, so but so like, you it's, like what, it's to... like what the Tonight Show used yeah, to be. Yeah, nobody's, you know? nobody's you got turning on Carson, it down. No. Yeah. You're getting on there, but you got you got a plan now that you go, okay, I'm going to be on Joe Rogan, but I also have to think of the post and picture I'm going to use of us together so I can defend him. <laughs> and I think uh, Mark Norman did the best one so far where he's like choking Joe Rogan. And he goes, <laughs> trying to keep Joe Rogan from saying the N-word. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. But, you know, people do love to go down rabbit holes, and this is why I don't like this kind of stuff. Because when people zero in on somebody they don't like, yeah, they'll go back and they'll dig up this stuff. Now, the woman who put together the montage of the N-word, I played her clip the other day, is this uh, artist named India Irie, who some people might remember. But her point was simply, he can say whatever he wants, but this platform was built on the backs of musical artists. And we're getting paid nothing, and he's getting $100 million, right? right? So she's got a very solid point, yeah, too. Yeah, I like, agree. Look, I'm not saying she was she was taking her music off. And again, to be fair, none of these are A-list platinum artists, right? But they're doing what they think is right. No one is saying, uh, I don't know what they're saying. But I haven't heard anybody. They've said, look, I don't like this. I'm leaving. But people love to go down these rabbit holes. That's why earlier in the week you saw Ted Danson and Howard Stern trending because of old videos of them in blackface. Now, Stern's uncancelable. You can't, if you're some kid who just discovered Howard Stern, sorry, you're 30 years too late, by mm-hmm. the way, right? It was really rough back in the day. But, and some people might be old enough to remember when Ted Danson was dating Whoopi Goldberg in the early 90s. Who's also in trouble. Also in trouble. Everybody's in trouble. <laughs> but, it was, but it was with 
Ted Danson goes in blackface, and, I mean, he knew it was a bad idea, but Whoopi had dared him to do it. It was a Friars Club roast of Whoopi Goldberg. So blackface, a lot of N-word. I mean, people in the room were having a hard time with this. In 93, 94, he does this, right? But it's not like people were cool with it then. Everybody's got this idea that, like, you know, oh, like the 90s, people were just like, yeah, cool, whatever. I mean, Ted Danson had to, like, leave the country for a year after that in the early 90s. So all this, like, fake right-wing pearl clutching, it's not that they really care. Ted Danson took his licks a long time ago, and he's like, look, whoopee. To-. But if you ever see that video, like, nobody's laughing at this, and, you know... Because it was you, pretty gross. What do you mean right-wing pearl clutching? Because the people who get all upset about this are traditionally overly woke people. No, I'm talking about the what aboutism of like right-wingers going, what about Ted oh, Danson? Oh, 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 okay. You know, you owe that thing 30 mm-hmm. years ago that yeah. he, you know. So, but people don't want apologies. They want somebody's career nuked. It doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense. And to I me. don't get it because it's like. You're never going to run out of people to try to do that. And then who are you going to have to make you laugh or play songs for you or do, you know, I don't know what the point is. I think that people have have um, platforms where they can people can respond to whatever. And if you got a lot of time on your hands, nothing better to do. You're going to drill down on people, whether it's Joe Rogan or whether it's, you know, so I don't know. Those kinds of things make me really, really uncomfortable. I guess there's something that there's people just talking so about. It's so malicious. It's so like, like yeah. you said, they want. Okay, you made a mistake. However long ago it was, they want your entire career gone. I want to ruin your life. Nobody you know? wants apologies. They say right. they want apologies, but then when they get one, they're like, "That's, That's not good, good enough." enough. <laughs> what else are you doing? Prove it. How yeah. are you working to do this? And then you show them a list of, "Well, I've done this and this and this and that," and then it's always like. Yeah, well, you should be deplatformed. Well, or, listen, you know. I, I think Rogan might have actually been the guy who said it. Before all this, he's like, you'll never be woke enough. Yeah. And I'm all for everything progressive. I'm all for it. But, man, you got to you gotta pick your battles. And But I don't know. I don't know. If you, But if you know that stuff is there, you think he would have scrubbed it. I don't know. Um, okay, let me give you some money here. It's a thousand bucks. Chance for you to go fund yourself. Listen for these keywords anytime you hear them about 30 past the hour, and good luck. The buzzard wants you to go fund yourself and score one thousand dollars. Enter the nationwide keyword fun at WMMS.com. That's fun. Enter it now at WMMS.com and good luck from Buzzard Radio. On the subject of videos going around today. Don't forget that Dave Chappelle is very rich. (laughs) Have you seen the Dave Chappelle video? No. No. People are all angry now at Dave Chappelle. He lives out there in Yellow Springs. They've been angry Mm -hmm. at Dave Chappelle. He lives out there in Yellow Springs. And uh, he mentioned about a year or so ago that he was going to add um, a great deal to the local development there. He likes that community. It's where he and his family live. Was that by Dayton? Yeah. Okay. And so he was going to open a huge restaurant. He's going to open the Firehouse Eatery. And he was going to open his own comedy club. Live from YS is what it's called. And um, he shows up at a Yellow Springs city council meeting. And he basically says, because part of this development plan was to build low-income housing. And Dave Chappelle says, if you do that, I will remove all of my investments. <laughs> so people are, again, he's a rich guy who wants a return on his investment. Mm-hmm. But it kind of runs counter to how a lot of people consider Dave Chappelle to be. You also need people to work in those restaurants, Dave. Yeah. Do it the next city over. They can take a bus. Right. Like, I, I, like, how about we fund busing from the next city over? Outside of my zoning. They, they can take a shuttle, and then, you know, they can work in the city. But I thought Yellow Springs was a pretty Tony community, though. I had no idea that they even would consider low-income housing in a place like Yellow. Again, I've never been there, but you, you've been there. Though. I don't think it's, yeah, like, I mean, hoity. I thought it was. I thought it was a little kind of um, I don't know. upper-middle-class enclave there. Yeah, I think it is. I have no idea. It's country. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Hi, I'm Beige Bell. <laughs> I just want to say, and Marianne, I could talk to you about this privately. Um, I don't know why the village council would be afraid of litigation from a $24 million a year company while they it's out a $65 million a year company. I cannot believe you would make me audition for you. You look like clowns. I am not bluffing. I will take it all off the table. That's all. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's what he said, I guess. So they're going to go back to their original plan of a bunch of homes that are going to be around three hundred grand apiece. Now, I don't know what any of this means. I'm not quite sure why people are so upset about it, but uh, obviously... He doesn't want poor people living in his community because it would bring the property value down. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's the That's that, all it is. That seems to be the hot take on it. I mean, I think most issues are more complex than, than you can uh, credit for in a tweet, but, I mean, it's still, yeah... Again, I, I grew up out to get away from the food stamps and all that. I don't I don't want to be around that again now that I got money. I can move to, you know, any city yeah, in the world. I mean, but not everybody wealthy thinks that way. Uh, there are there are wealthy donors to all kinds of um Sure, they donate to know. that community, but they don't want to live in that and community. Listen, <laughs> and listen, Dave Chappelle is is not um you know, he he does uh give of his time and his resources for other things, but I just um it's kind of a I don't know. That's the same. I don't know thing. if that's weird. That, that's a talking point that the right always has, at least on Fox News, where they say, "Oh, you know, the left always wants to have funding for schools, and they want to give all their money to schools, but their kids." And they go say it like a bad thing too. Well, but but, but, <laughs> but, but they have a point. Fund schools. We're try We're over here trying to get rid of ice shanty prostitution, and you want to fund schools. But they have a point when they say, "But your your kids are in a private school. You know, you're doing so great for the, for the community, and you you feel like the teachers get paid well, and schools are." functioning properly, but yet you send your kids to private school. Most people, your constituents can't send their kids to private school. They don't have a choice. So why don't you have your kids get a grip on reality and go to regular regular school? Well, again, that doesn't mean that they don't have a grip on reality. I mean, anybody would... Um, anybody with resources would put them toward what they thought was important. And there are some districts that have great public schools. And, and plenty of people do send their kids to public schools. It's just ridiculous that we don't In other have, places, they have awful public schools. But it's, it's ridiculous that that's not something that's consistent across the country. That's not even consistent from county to county. Right, I know. Or and cities. And it should be. It absolutely should be. I, I remember we got into an argument with a guy a few years ago, and I was, like, it's... And people blame those city schools. They go, whoa, they should do this and this. And it's like they've been they stripped of all their resources. I remember because Oberlin, there was like a, a debate for a while about if they would have busing. And I'm like, busing? Like, I, it just seemed crazy to me because I had always grew up with like busing. But I didn't realize all the other schools around in the county, a lot of them didn't have busing. Like, I think Wellington didn't have busing. And I'm like, oh, man, like, I don't want to walk to school every day in the cold. I'm going I'm to be a truant student if that's the case. But then I got my car and I was fine. <laughs> he he pre for the he, it was a preemptive strike on his part. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to be truant over here. They're I like, ain't about to walk to school. They're like, calm down, son. You're not exactly killing it over here. And Oberlin's only three miles in diameter anyway. So there's really yeah. no place that's not walkable in that city. I swear there's no need for buses. Let those little bastards walk and now get that exercise. He's, now that he's out. Yeah. yeah, let him walk. That's right. Let this little bastards walk. It's only three miles. Alan, uh, Yellow Springs kind of a hippie granola town, but there's already Section Eight there. Okay, yeah, I've never been out there. And okay, but that'll that'll be the little clip that'll be going. Uh, I mean, big that's going around. I don't know enough about what's going on with it. I don't either. To be, like, to be like, well, what a piece of garbage. Right, that's like, what I'm but saying. But it's also his money, and he can do whatever the hell he wants with it. Yes. For any reason, yeah. he could say, if you're going to paint that building red, I don't like the color red, and I'm taking all my money back. It's his money. He can say anything. And boy, it's going to be red because it's called the Firehouse Eatery. That's what I'm saying. Oh, boy, come on. I've... Uh... That's some mixed messages right there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I got to take a break. If you want to text for anything, 35192 is that number. You can watch at alancockshow.com. I get the video there. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can listen to the show on the iHeartRadio app. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS.